Late today, Lieutenant. It's been that kind of day, Gracie. Hmm. Let me know if you see anything moving around in that chili. It's from Wednesday. Just the way I like it. Mm. Lieutenant. Oh, hiya, Brady. Sir, we've got a break on the Chambers killing. No kidding. Sit down. Have you had lunch yet? Uh, uh, no, sir. This place makes the greatest chili. It's simply fantastic. I can smell it from here. I order you a bowl. No, thanks, sir, but I'm on kind of a diet. Uh, Lieutenant. You know about the missing files? Uh, right, all six belong to families that bought houses in that new development. Falcon Ridge. Falcon Ridge, and some of them are suing uh, because of breach of contract, something like that. Well, they were trying, but they weren't getting very far. Sir, they found the murder weapon in an empty lot up at Falcon Ridge. Yeah? Ballistics matched it to the gun that killed Chambers. Well, I wouldn't be that much surprised. Well, it looks to me like we've got it narrowed down to a member of one of those six families. Now, I've had a couple of guys taking statements, and so far it looks pretty good. Um, the Devereaux's. Home all night watching television. Husband and wife alibi each other. Convenient, huh? Then there's Amanda Bristol. Divorced, worked until 8, arrived home at 8.30. And then there's this guy, Connolly, the neighborhood rabble-rouser. Yeah, right. Uh, Brady, you're on the ball. I like that. Uh, all terrific, but you're climbing the wrong ladder. This stuff is terrible. Sir? They've changed the recipe for the chili. Gracie, what happened? You lost the chef? Chef? Rama, the big guy. Yeah, one brown eye, one blue. He went back to Mazatlan two months ago. We got a new guy back there, Heinrich. Heinrich? You got a guy named Heinrich to make chili? Keep the chains. Here, come on, Brady. Got to walk this stuff off. Thanks, Lieutenant. My wife told me to... That stuff was gonna kill me someday. I think she was right. Sir, about those people up on Falcon Ridge. None of those people killed Mr. Chambers. They didn't? You know the piece of paper that you found on Mr. Chambers' coat and it had numbers and letters on it? Those were basketball bets. No kidding. Ah. KP, Nick's Pistons. CL, Celtics Lakers. 600, 800, the amount he bet. Now, uh, what did we find in the victim's coat jacket? Uh, an envelope. With $1,400 in it. Huh? Eh? Like this one? Oregon Hotel, right? Yes, sir. Now, you know what this is? This was the payoff from the bookie. The bookie works out of the hotel lobby. Now, 7 o'clock the night Mr. Chambers was killed, he goes, he collects from this guy, and then he goes back to his office. You follow me? Yes. Well, let me ask you something. You're a guy with $1,400 cash in your pocket. How come you suddenly leave your office at 9.30, go to an automatic teller, and pick up another $200? Doesn't make any sense. It makes sense, all right, if you're a killer trying to establish a phony time of death. Chambers didn't make that withdrawal. The killer did, to make it look like Chambers was still alive at 9.45. That means he died earlier, much earlier. Medical examiner says it could have been as early as 7.30, 8 o'clock. But he was with Mrs. Dimitri till quarter past 8. You know what I think? I think I got to get something to wash out the taste of that chili. You want ice cream? Uh, no, thanks. As soon as I saw the money, I said to myself, this is a put-up job. Somebody's trying to hide the time of death, and why? And as sure as Santa Claus wears red BVDs, I know somebody will have an alibi you can't break with a sledgehammer. Mrs. Dimitri. I want one of those uh, orange pops. I'll tell you something else that's interesting, Mr. Brady. That withdrawal. That was made from a teller machine in the lobby of the Plaza building. That's the same building that the lady had dinner with her boyfriend from 8.30 till just past 10. Now, just before they leave, the lady goes to the powder room. You figure it out. Lieutenant, that's great. We've got her. Got her? How do you figure that? Now, all I got is a theory and a set of circumstances. What I don't have is anything the DA can bring to the grand jury. Oh. Lieutenant? Oh. Oh, oh sorry. I guess this tooth. I gotta have it looked at. Whenever I get anything cold on it. Oh, that's another thing. My dentist. 
sir. Before my wife and I came back from the vacation, I got a couple of calls from my dentist assistant. They wanted to set up an appointment for me to come in and clean my teeth. Yeah, my dentist does that all the time. But you have a dentist, Mr. Brady. I don't have one. I moved to Florida four months ago. I never got a new one. So somebody, and I'm pretty sure it's Vivian Dimitri, was very anxious to know when I was going back to work. And now all I got to do is figure out why. Just one more thing.